When Fibonacci levels are too close together within a channel, it's difficult to separate them and use them as individual trend lines, especially when there's congestion and increased volatility such as near the bottom of this channel, whereas significant events such as sharp reversals and major breakouts usually happen near the borders of the channel rather than near the internal levels of the channel. This sharp incline provides a good example of when it's appropriate to have a Fibonacci channel based on a sharper trend line. And when there's a bearish reversal, there are great swing points to produce a stable trend line and Fibonacci channel at a moderate angle. However, the internal Fibonacci levels are too close to each other and produce the same problems we discussed earlier. The solution is to widen the channel by extending point 3 further away from the trend line from points 1 and 2. The start of the last major bullish move is a great place to reference for determining a clear place to put point 3. This way, an internal level can capture moderate to major movement such as this swing point. Rather than having this kind of event take place near the border of a more compact Fibonacci channel. With the shift back towards an uptrend, we can see this same kind of process of widening a channel to get more clear coverage of internal levels as useful trend lines. There are usually several options depending on how wide or narrow you want the lines to be from each other.